practice. I would call to order the Village of Westmont Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for December 14, 2011. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Thomas? Here. Commissioner Pill? Here. Commissioner Anton? Here. Commissioner Fidesco? Here. Commissioner Fleet? Here. Commissioner Van Buren is here, and Chairman Richard? Here. We have a quorum. If you would please all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. While I have you all standing, anybody who's going to give any testimony tonight for or against any item, you've got to be sworn in. So repeat after me, I swear that any testimony I give this evening shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Okay, the three people there are not considered sworn in. All right, uh, if you would please, I would ask everybody as you approach the podium to sign in, and if you would also silence any and all electronic devices. Next item is the approval of the minutes of November 19th, which they are not ready, so we cannot do that. We'll do it next month. Under new business, planning and zoning item 11045, Circle K RDK Ventures with Jetco Properties regarding the property located at 609 North Cass for the following. A, special use permit request to operate an automobile service station and laundry in the B2 General Business District. Is anybody here? Yes, sir, if you would, please. Hi, my name is Terry Johnson. My title is Market Manager with Circle K, and I'm here to represent the, the company. We're applying for a special use permit in our name instead of uh, from the Jewel. And this is uh, ever since the property has been resubdivided, so it's a standalone. It is standalone. Yes, it is. Okay. And uh, just so everybody knows, the way it is operating right now, that's the way it will be operating in the future. Current. Yes, we have no plans for any any changes in the, okay. in the operation. Is there anybody from the public who will speak on this issue? Okay. We'll close the public comment. We'll start with Commissioner Fleet. Um, no questions here. Okay. Commissioner Fidesco. Um, being that it's going to be the same as it is today, I, I don't have any questions. Okay. Commissioner Van Buren. No questions. Commissioner uh, Anton. No questions. Commissioner Pill. No questions. A comment, just hoping we'll see some stabilizing of the gas prices over there. I drive by several times a day, and I notice it fluctuates rapidly. We have a, yes, we have a very good pricing structure, and uh, <clears throat> we're not playing the yo-yo game with the competition down the street. Buck fifty a gallon. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Thomas? No question. Okay, uh, I do have a couple of questions. One as to uh, your good pricing quality. I'm sorry? Uh, your pricing, your competitive pricing, yes, 17 cents cheaper by me. It is. Health into town, yes, sir. Uh, Shannon. Yes. Okay. The only thing I have, this really does not pertain to him, but under uh, our page two where you've defined an automobile, automobile laundry is defined in the zoning ordinance as a building or portion thereof containing facilities for washing motor vehicles using mechanical methods. What about hand car washes? They um, could fall outside this, so if this is for the future, our own future housekeeping, you understand, it doesn't mm -hmm. concern you. Um, if we were to drop that and just for washing motor vehicles, period. If that's, that make more sense, maybe in the future? That would be a text amendment that the Planning and Zoning Commission could recommend to the board if that was the direction. Just something, you know, that popped into my mind. Always okay. Thinking. Any further questions? Since we have a special use, uh, we need a reading of a finding of fact. If we could have that, please. Next. Criteria number one. The establishment, maintenance, or operation of the special use will not be detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, morals, comfort, or general welfare. 
This property was previously developed and operated as a service station and car wash, and this new special use is required due to a change in ownership. The continuation of this use using existing improvements upon the property will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or general welfare. Criteria number two, that the special use will not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for the purposes already permitted, nor substantially diminish or impair property values within the neighborhood. The special use will continue the previous service station and car wash operations at this location. Other service stations and car washes are located along Ogden Avenue in the general vicinity of this location. Accordingly, this special use will not adversely affect surrounding properties. Criteria number three, that the establishment of the special use will not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding property for uses permitted in the district. No new improvements are proposed for this, dis for this property and surrounding property is already developed. Accordingly, this special use will not affect the development and improvement of surrounding properties. Criteria number four, the adequate utilities, access ways, drainage, and other necessary facilities have been or are being provided. Since this property is fully improved and no new improvements are proposed, all adequate utilities, access ways, drainage, and other facilities are in place. Criteria number five, that adequate measures have been or will be taken to provide ingress and egress so designed as to minimize traffic congestion in the public streets. Sufficient and safe access for this property currently exists and no modifications are proposed. Criteria six, that the special use shall in all other respects conform to the applicable regulations of the district in which it's located, except as such regulations may in each instance be modified by the village board pursuant to the recommendation of the plan commission. No new improvements are proposed and the proposed use will meet all requirements of the Westmont zoning ordinance and other regulations of the village. Criteria number seven, the proposed use meets the special conditions of special condition two. The special use will allow for the continuation of existing operations by a new owner under a new name. There will be no unique impact on traffic congestion or pedestrian safety as a result of this change in ownership. Criteria number eight, the proposed use meets the special conditions of special condition seven. Existing sufficient landscaping is in place for the property. There will be no repair service or storage of vehicles on the property. If you agree with these findings of fact, please raise your hand. We are unanimous in agreement. The findings of fact for a special use are hereby adopted and approved. I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees, finding and zoning item 11045, a special use permit request to operate an automobile service station and laundry in the B2 General Business District. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Pill, seconded by Commissioner Fidesco. Question on the motion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Pill. Yes. Commissioner Anton. Yes. Commissioner Fidesco. Yes. Commissioner Fleet. Yes. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. And Chairman Richard. Yes. All right, sir, you have our uh, approval for consideration, and Shannon can tell you when you'll go before a Thursday evening committee of the whole. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Perhaps they shouldn't say that anymore. Now they may not have a Thursday evening. They're combining the board. Under some circumstances, right? That yeah, they might. Okay. I'll change the way I say it. Planning and zoning item 11046. Mia Curtis of Cash Closet regarding the property located at 143 South Cash for the following. Special use permit request to operate a resale consignment shop in the B1 Limited Business District. Ms. Curtis? I did bring some things to show you by myself. My business um, came about when I had breast cancer and I was recovering and I started selling things out of my closet because they really didn't mean anything anymore. And one thing led to another and my business took off on the internet so I'm looking for a home to have people come and be able to bring their things in. I'm a resident in Westmont and I believe in keeping my business here. My husband and I own the Grange Glass Company for 22 years and his family 50. Um, I think I can bring lots of things to the community and lots of giving back. Uh, my items are thousand dollar handbags, some of my handbags are five thousand dollars, my shirts are six hundred. Because my business is on the internet um, largely, um, I, that's how I sell. So I'm not worried about you know the traffic. I'm already making my rent before I came in here. 
All right, is there anybody from the public who will talk on this? We'll close the public comment. We'll start with Commissioner Fleet. So, um, the property you're looking at will be a showroom. Correct. And um, just uh, how would you address, well, one of the questions uh, looking at is um, access for people um, who maybe can't climb stairs or whatever? We do have wheelchair access okay. in the back of the building. Great, mm -hmm. okay. And parking, you're planning on people coming in and parking in the back of the building? There's about 10 or 12 spaces in the back which is more than ample, and then you can kind of pull around like that. And I liked it because of the drop off, because women are bringing in tons of clothes from you know the surrounding areas. They don't want to be walking blocks and blocks with their items. So I, that's what I did like about that location. Will there be lighting on the parking lot? Um, are yeah. you plan hours where you would need lighting? No. Uh, consignments are basically 11 to 5, maybe one night a week unless it really skyrockets, skyrockets, and then if I am open at night, then I would have to. I don't know if there's lighting there or not. I haven't checked into it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's mostly like a Tuesday through Saturday business. Okay. But even at five o'clock nowadays, it's... If I need to, I will. Yeah, okay. Fine, no further questions. Good luck. Thank you. Mr. Fidesco. Yeah, I only had, I had the same question about the parking. I didn't know exactly how much parking was back there, but 10 spaces, that should be plenty. You hope, I hope. <laughs> no. um, since a lot of your business is internet. Um, as far as the, the the property itself, are you intending on doing any type of uh, sprucing up of the property? I am. Um, Bob is the gentleman I'm running from, redoing the whole outside. My mother and I are gardening the whole property. Awnings, I tell you that it will look like one of the boutiques in Hinsdale and I used to live in Hinsdale and I moved out for a reason. I, I like it here. I think our town could be just it. <coughs> have just as many, you know, cute little stores. So I, I plan to, I think you'll like it when you see it. Yeah, that, that was my only concern. I just thought that it needed a little bit of sprucing up. It's going to get lots of sprucing up. Good, good. Mm -hmm. I have no further questions. Mr. Van Buren. You uh, claimed that the business had started online. Is Correct. that right? <clears throat> and you, obviously, online, there's no sales tax revenue. Uh, at this point. At this point. Correct. Um, how, and you're going to be operating out here. How do you distinguish and delineate your sales online from the ones that are made here to assure that the Westmont gets its share of the sales tax revenue? Um, there will be, well, we'll have a special program um, for consignment stores, and it separates everything for you. So anything that's made here, there'll be a separate book for everything that sells in that store. Commissioner Ranton. Sounds pretty good. I like the sprucing up thing too. Is there any guys' clothes? Six hundred dollar men's shirts right here. <laughs> some some of my um, fellow um, commissioners need some help. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. talking. I'm carrying very high end items: Bottega Veneta, Vitaliano Pancaldi. Uh, the gentleman I work with goes to Italy. We're talking very nice. I think it's you're going to like the people that it brings. I think it's going to be really good for the neighborhood. And I like the uh, children's consignment. I'm not going to carry kids. I did at my house recovering. I won't because she has a store there. I'm kind of hoping that we bounce off of one another. Good luck. Thank you. Commissioner Pill. I think it's a great one. I like your whole plan. I've checked the website out, and I'm into it. Good luck. We're all about giving back, and I'm hoping the month of October in Westmont will be very big as far as breast cancer goes. I would like to take that over. I'm hoping really, truthfully, to buy a set of breasts for someone whose insurance doesn't pay for it. Because you have no clue how many people need help. It just kind of happened. I am a hairstylist, though. I don't do hair anymore. <laughs> Commissioner Thomas. Uh, no questions. Good luck. Thank you. The only real concern I have is your parking. I'm afraid it might not be enough. Really? I hope, I hope you exceed it. Well, you know, it's a double lot back. I'll do whatever it takes. And you have to pave the whole thing to hold the cars. I'm very happy to see you. Thank you. No further comments? Okay. Can I just toss in my two cents here for one minute? Please. I, I oh. do want to point out that um, 
they do meet the technical re parking requirements. So I think we're concerned just in, in practicality if you're very successful that then you may have to do some figure. And I will. Um, so just for the record, the, the technical parking requirement yeah. is met. It's a 900 square foot unit. They're required to have five spaces by code. Um, and then I just wanted to also mention that Mr. Snow has already been in to talk to staff about uh, pulling a permit to do some siding work and get started on some of the cleanup aspects. Great. And I'm sure if you ever had to light that parking lot a spot or two on the, on the building itself shining out, it more than suffice for you. I will do whatever it takes. I just, I really want to work in the town that I live in. That's important to me. I'm just going to keep my wife out of there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Since we have a uh, special use request, uh, we need a reading of the findings of fact. Criteria number one, that the establishment, maintenance, or operation of the special use will not be detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, morals, comfort, or general welfare. All operations will be conducted indoors and sufficient parking will be provided. Accordingly, this use will not be detrimental to the public health or general welfare. Criteria number two, that the special use will not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for the purposes already permitted, nor substantially diminish or impair property values within the neighborhood. The retail use is appropriate for the B1 Limited Business District with all operations conducted indoors. Thrift store or rummage shop operations are, pro are prohibited. As a result, this use will not impair property values within the area. Criteria number three, that the establishment of the special use will not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding property for uses permitted in the district. Surrounding properties are fully developed and this property, this proposed use will not affect orderly development of surrounding properties in the future. Criteria number four, the adequate utilities, access ways, drainage, and or other necess necessary facilities have been or are being provided. The existing structure is serviced by adequate utilities, access ways, and other necessary facilities. Criteria number five, that adequate measures have been or will be taken to provide ingress and egress so designed as to minimize traffic congestion in the public streets. The proposed contains an existing curb cut onto Cass Avenue and has sufficient off-street parking to accommodate this proposed use. Criteria number six, that the special use shall in all other respects conform to the applicable regulations of the district in which it's located, except as such regulations may in each instance be modified by the village board pursuant to the recommendation of the plan commission. Except for a waiver of the masonry requirements, this proposed use will meet all regulations of the village and no variances are required. If you agree with these findings, please raise your hand. Absolutely. We are unanimous in agreement. The findings of fact for a special use permit are hereby adopted. I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees, Planning and Zoning Item 11046, a special use permit request to operate a resale consignment shop in the B1 Limited Business District. So moved. Second. That's motion by Commissioner Fidesco, seconded by Commissioner Fleet. Question on the motion. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Anton? Yes. Commissioner Fidesco? Yes. Commissioner Fleet? Yes. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Pill? Yes. And Chairman Richard? Yes. All right, Ms. Curtis, you have our recommendation. And Shannon will tell you when you're going to go up here before the village board. Super. Thank you very much, everyone. Good luck to you. Thanks. Planning and zoning item 11047, Raymond and Catherine Sodoma regarding the property located at 324 North Richmond for the following. A, zoning code variance request to permit lot coverage greater than the 30% maximum allowed in a defined development moratorium area. Good evening. Um, Right. Ray and I are here today to um, ask for any um, coverage variance. Um, when we appeared last year asking for a variance for a setback for an addition that we built, um, we had an, a, a, a real mess all winter long. We got caught with the weather turning cold in the beginning of December, and we had this huge pile of concrete from where they took out our garage floor and our stoop that was along the front of the house and another huge pile of dirt from the excavation of the sub base sub um, basement for the addition 
and we had a porta potty sitting there all winter, and we had just the lawn was all torn up. It was just a terrible mess all winter long. So over the about March, they finished the inside part of the addition, and we went on to try to do some landscaping. And when we were outside um, looking at the thing, the way our big, we've got huge big trees out there, and it shades the front of the house a lot of time. So we had problems growing anything up on our porch. And with the porch removed and the new area in front of the um, addition, we had, a concern about being able to have grass grow. And we talked to a landscaper and we were talking about options and what we could do. And the whole purpose of the addition was to make things easier for us as we got older so that we wouldn't have to go to a nursing home or something like that. And as we were talking about the outside work, we had talked about putting gravel up next to the or concrete, um, not concrete, those big rocks like up against the house so that we wouldn't have to worry about grass growing. And that seems to be a problem because the leaves collect in there from the big trees and everything. And then, yeah, I mean, everything seemed to be more work. So what we decided to do was use paver blocks. And when we first started talking about it, we were just talking about lining the, um, the edge of the, the front of the house with them, you know, three or four feet wide or whatever. And as we, the more we talked about it, the more we thought, well, if we expanded it out, we could then make sort of like a patio area. And again, Ray has a garden in the back, but we can't get up and down as easily as we used to, so we thought about putting a planter at the edge of this patio brick area. And all of this was done in about three weeks. I mean, we talked about it, got it done and everything. We never applied for a permit for the patio because we didn't know we needed one. And in, a, in addition to that, we were aware of the fact that we had to watch the, the amount of coverage our house, you know, the, the footprint, if you want to call it that, because of the water problems in the area. So we thought that since it had originally been told to us that, you know, it was 35, I believe it was. Is that right, Shannon? It was 35% at the time that you went through your zoning approval last year, right. and um, we allowed you to use that number when you applied for a permit because you were in process at that time. Right, and so it, it ended up being that, that we're either 0.9 over or, I forgot where I put it down, Shannon. It's, um, well, the discrepancy was, uh, between the numbers that staff found and the numbers that the surveyor found with the as-built. We, at the staff level, found that it's an overage of about 2.9%. The surveyor appeared to omit a section showing the planters, which did count towards the impermeable lot coverage, and um, indicated on the survey that it was 0.9% over the 35% percent that we allowed at the time. This is all uh, separate from the fact that uh, the moratorium of 30 percent went into place October, excuse me, September 20th of last year. So staff has determined that it is actually 37.9? Correct. All right. Thank you. And the part of the, I'm not sure when the, in the terms of um, that 37.9, the planner is open. It doesn't have any bottom in it. No. It's just like a wall, a wall, a wall, and wall. So that when, and it's just higher, so that we can, you know, like sit on the wall and do our planting and stuff like that, as opposed to bending down and putting the flowers in in the ground at a lower level. Um, the other thing is, when we picked the paver brick, we did so with the idea that it was water soluble. I mean, you know, the water would go through. And I mean, the village has it. Downers Grove District um, 68 put it in all their parking lots. Um, we've had a lot, like, in, it was finished at the, the patio area with the paver bricks, was finished, I think it was like the 5th of May. It was early in spring. It was before all the heavy rains that we had in June. We had water standing in there for maybe two or three hours but it all went down. It didn't run out. There's like an edging on it, so it couldn't go anywhere. It, it just went down and settled through. So it's not a matter of the water running off somewhere where it's gonna enter the, um, what do you call it, the storm sewer system. And or, it is slanted slightly down, so it's not going into the house. Yeah, it slants away from the house a little bit. 
So I, we, we respectfully submit that we're sorry that we didn't realize that we were going over at the time, um, but we do think that under the circumstances with the paver brick being the way it is um, and the water all draining out, that it would, we would request that you would allow the overage of 2.9% or 9% depending on which figure you use. All right, uh, is there anybody from the public who will speak on this? We'll close the public comment. <coughs> We'll start with Commissioner Thomas. I'm sorry, uh, Craig. Shannon, would you care to add anything before we start? Um, let's, hear, let's hear staff first, okay, Craig? Just for the record, I, I feel that there was a level of transparency all along the process with regard to the lot coverage issues. Um, it came up during the public hearing last July. Um, we talked at that time on lot coverage. I think at that point, um, with the 35% number, some changes were made to provide some more open space with the former horseshoe driveway to get rid of one of the curb cuts. Um, and subsequent to that, I, I believe I took a phone call from uh, yourselves or Mr. Paul Paul, the, the builder, um, inquiring about what could be done. Uh, because of the tree cover, there's some difficulty in getting plants and grass to establish there. So I, I feel that all along the process, it was pretty clear that we were backing into that total maximum lot coverage number. Um, so that's, that's the testimony I feel like I should add. Okay, thank you, Shannon. Uh, Commissioner Thomas, if you would. All right, uh, you, I'm gonna tell you what I'm hearing here. Okay. And either you or Shannon, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Now, the planters, you're, you're claiming that the planters should not be counted as impermeable. That, that in fact, well, the they don't, hold on a sec. Okay. They, they do not have a bottom. They're filled with dirt, and the water goes the whole way through into the ground. Right. So it's not like it's blocking water and it's going to hold water. No, no it won't. Correct? Hold. Right. Okay. And without, We still have to water it ourselves because it right, drains right, right through. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But as far as, as flooding and that kind of issue, because you're lucky enough to live in the, in the area where, yeah. where now you're at 30%, yeah. as, as far as a permitted, right, correct? 30%? Right. Okay. Moratorium, right, right. With out counting the planners, Shannon, they're at thirty-five nine point nine. The planning engineer determined that it looked like at minimum the planter area was omitted, um, but you can see it's also seeding. It's planting and seeding. Um, so it, at minimum, that wall around the planter area seems to have been omitted. And it's also staff's testimony that the whole way during this process, it was discussed what the limits were, and and uh, so it, it's. That's not completely true because no. we didn't know about the moratorium until Kim came to inspect in early October. Or, or was it September? I think it was, it was this, either late this, September or early October. This year, she she came to do the final inspection. And at that time, she the first thing she said to Ray is, "This has all got to go." She's got to tear we it had, up. We had no idea that. Plus, I mean, we we thought we were doing what we should be doing by using the, the paver block because so the water would drain through, as opposed to concrete or something like that. One that of we the reasons we couldn't use. one of the reasons we really decided to do it is because we know the city of Westmont specifically puts paver blocks in downtown districts so they'd have those trees grow. And it was written up in a paper that way years ago when they did that. So I thought, well, if it's drainage for the trees so they can grow, it'd certainly be drainage for the water that would be coming off the, the uh, patio. So, so and it's you're, not, the water so doesn't you're come assuming, off the You patio. assume that, but you never really went and said, hey, we're thinking about this. Because you're right. As, we never, right. I we never, never thought about it. it. We I never just, considered it as a patio. I never considered started. it as a problem. We just, because there were gaps. Yes, and yeah. also because it was the water would go through. I mean, I know it sounds silly, but we didn't think of it as coverage that would be, um, what was the word that you guys used? Impermeable. Impermeable. Right. Yeah. We didn't there's think of no, it as that way because it, it isn't. There's no sheet of plastic or anything under there. All there is is sand. And I think that um, just to kind of elaborate on the issue of impermeable and, and permeable pavers, um, 
the the village looks to the county as far as whether or not those are adopted and so we can uh, con continue to use them to provide some relief for stormwater matters. Um, that hasn't occurred yet. There's some test projects. So like the Morton Arboretum, for example, they've got a parking lot uh, that features a lot of the impermeable bricks. But what we found over time is that, and this may be part of the county's hesitancy in allowing for them, is that the void space between the bricks tends to um, fill up with debris, uh, rock material, and other things so that they lose a, some of their functionality. So they're, they're That's what Mr. Kimball said too. He said oil and whatnot, but we're not going to be driving on a patio. And as far as that, I mean, every time the leaves come down or the, I mean, uh, he's he's vacuumed it several times already. I you know, sweep just it off and to keep clean it, it clean. Up. I mean, it's we've always had a, a neat yard as much as we could with the way it looked. Okay, so the bo the bottom line is you you were at thirty five percent. You got a variance to 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 stay it when you had the addition and your first time you guys were here, you, you got an okay to keep it at 35%, correct? I, I wanna clarify that point as well. Um, the variance was for the front yard setback. When the commission heard the petition in last July two, uh, 2010, lot coverage was still 35%. So when the, the permit, the building permit was submitted, staff honored the 35% lot coverage. So um, Okay, so, so now what we're talking about now is either 2.9 or 0 0.9 over the 35% the that they were allowed. Right. Okay. Or 2.9, depending on how you look at it. The, the, what you consider the, the patio. The patio, well, the, the um, planter is made out of like the the bricks like you know where they have the the corners that can turn the regular bricks right. but they're like maybe nine inches wide and right, all right, the way right. around but in the center i'm the, talking about the dirt in the middle yeah it, this, the not, center three the whole, foot the whole is, area is not keeping water out no the the, no. the, 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 the edge we, we deliberately the edge wood of course but you have dirt in the middle right and it, it trains all right yeah. so uh, for, what I'm look, seeing is 0.9 over. That's what you're looking for. Right. That, uh, depending on who's doing the yeah, measuring. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Pill. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> how did uh, how did the property hold the water today? It isn't. It isn't. There, I mean, it's there's no water standing today. Only when you get a heavy downpour will you it, get it. Yeah. Will, will it stay for but when a it flooded hours, all over West Mountain, Chicago, and everywhere else last June. We had, you know, two inches that sat there for maybe three or four hours. But we had today. But it eventually it went down. Aurora. I mean, it's wet, but it's not standing water. Aurora and O'Hare both had over 1.5 inches. If you triangulate, that puts it right here with us. I drove by your property again for the second time at 6:30 tonight and didn't see any standing water or anything. Oh. So I would confirm that that's correct. Uh, the, yours is really an interesting one because there's two sides to this one. You know, on the one side. Um, your property was probably actually at 40%, then changed to 35%, and then changed to 30%. I, I think in and of itself, that's a tremendous hardship that, that has been imposed. You've got lots of room in the front area where this is all at. And most and, of that front area is oh, city let, property. Let me finish. And there's it been is. no flooding today. No. Um, the other side of this coin, though, um, is that this was very, very clearly made. I was sitting here when we went through this, and it sets a very poor example to go ahead and come in and get approval from us and then go and change the plans. And, you know, I don't know about the whole, you had all winter to think about this. While you were watching that pile, you had the whole winter to think about it. So the whole three week thing, I'm not so sure I'm buying that. The other thing is that we're putting the planter in so that you guys can grow stuff. But the reason we're putting the planter in is because you couldn't grow stuff. I mean, no, that's what no. you said. You said that we couldn't we grow, grow grass the there because of the shading of the no, trees. No. And now we're putting planters in so we can grow stuff, but they're still covered by the same shading of the trees. So, you know, I, I understand the hardships on one side, and I understand that the property drains itself fairly well, at least in the front, which is where we're talking about here, because you've got a lot of open property out there. 
But on the other hand, this is, this is almost the clearest example we've had where we've given very strong direction, and it seems like you've chosen to go in an opposite direction. Excuse me, but one of those trees that you're referring to had been removed. We took out the biggest one that was closest to the house in order to change the garage opening from the north side of the house to the east side of the house. I'm so not we, talking about any trees. I'm only restating what you said. You said that we could not grow grass here because of the shade of the trees. Therefore, we're going to put planters and a patio in. Well, the whole idea of putting a planter in is to grow more plants. And I think the plants need the same sunshine that the grass would need. I understand so what you're saying. So in either saying, case, I'm just saying that well. just doesn't seem to make sense to me. So I, I'm not sure which way I want to go. I want to hear what my fellow commissioners have to say. But again, I, I was not in favor of the 40% to 35% to 30%. I, I didn't think that was um, necessarily in homeowners' best interest, myself included. And I, like I said, I agree there's plenty of room in that particular area. I like what you've done to the property. It's a beautiful property. You've done a nice job of it. And I also think that today was a great example of a, I think today was a substantial rain, and I think your property held it. But like I said, on the other side, we went ahead and we spelled this out, and there are definitely conflicts with what was authorized and what was permitted. And I think you even agreed that you guys hadn't thought about getting a permit for that. I didn't know we needed a permit mm. for patio. I was, I was assuming there was a permit that was needed that was taken care of by the contractor or the or the uh, the uh, well, person that put it in the uh, the um, landscaper. Landscaper, excuse me. No. I assume that they would abide by what the bill. I thought I always assumed that that's what they would take care of. I didn't know I was my responsibility to get the permit. I mean, it's, it's hard to say. Excuse my part, because I should sorry, know, Mr. Paul, but I didn't I've mean, never done anything like that before. I didn't before. mean to confuse you about the growing situation. We did not, it, with that big tree gone, and the patio, the, the planter now is about 15 feet from the house, at least. And so we were talking, we, when we were thinking about doing this, it was the, the space that maybe was three or four or five feet up next to the house. I the see. planter's way out in the middle of the yard now, and with that big maple tree, I mean, we had a, I think it was a Norway maple, had huge big leaves on it, and it shaded the whole east side of the yard, practically. And that was what was covering the front of the house, where, where the garage was, in, where we entered from the north. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm sorry if I confused you. Thank you very much. No further questions. Commissioner Ranton? <clears throat> I think everything is going to be okay. Because <laughs> well, I sure hope so, because I don't want to tear it out. I think your I house think. looks nice. I've been through there. Um, I, I agree with, with my fellow commissioner that the 40 to 35 to 30, you're inherently going to cause trouble down the line somewhere, because someone down the line has 40% out there. They've got, they've got coverages down, a couple doors down. So what they've got here, it's draining. You know, I, I, you, so people can, I put a porch on and I didn't pull a permit, and I'm on the board. I didn't replace replacing a porch that's there with another porch. Hey, I got, you know, you need to get a permit. So as you get, it's a learning process for some people. And some people, I don't know if you guys have ever built anything no, before. No. Okay, so there you go. I've done mean, some things different. But everybody sure. listening and watching, pull permits, because we're not gonna go easy on you. But you guys, creating your own water problem? Kidding. Good luck with it, you'll be fine. Mr. Van Buren. I tend to uh, agree with uh, Commissioner Pell in that you're somewhat uh, claiming ignorance on uh, not going and getting a permit for adding these stones. And um, you seem like some pretty bright people. And since this has been uh, uh, made exceedingly clear all along about this area being uh, an area where we had this great concern that um, I feel that uh, what you've done that's gone beyond what you've had permitted is totally wrong. And I will vote that way. Commissioner Fidesco. Um, my only comment is that uh, you should always check yeah. the municipality yeah, for permits. <laughs> you know, I, even when you think you don't need it, because you may, you know, and. and I think we depended on our contractor Contractors do don't always yeah, and I didn't know that. tell you and, everything. I mean, so he's, we're still not done. I mean, we still have things that he has to finish. Uh, you know, like he has a, there's a wrought iron handrail that has to go on the outside. 
things like that that, you know, I mean, we haven't paid him his last payment and we're not going to until he's done. But we depended on him because we thought he'd built in Westmont before. He did the one on Melrose and stuff, and we thought he knew what he was doing. Yeah, with that being said, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, what we're really talking about is, is really a matter of one, maybe two percent if you add the wall. You know, we're talking 0.9 plus something because the wall itself is, is, is non-permeable. I, I mean, it's, it, it will not let the water go through. Uh, but as far as the rest of it, the water will go through. You know, so I don't have a real big problem with it. I mean, it's a matter of you were trying to stay within that limit. You were told to stay within that limit, but you exceeded it by a little bit. So I don't have a huge problem with it. Thank you. No further comments. Commissioner Fleet. Um, steering over to a different thing, Shannon, could you enlighten us on, on the uh, sidewalk improvement and cash in lieu payment? How did uh, sure. some um, talk about that with the Sonoma? One of the requirements when there's an addition is um, of code is to install sidewalks where they are not provided in the public right of way. And um, given that, um, I'm not sure if all of the neighbors have sidewalks in that area, <laughs> but um, the petitioners had requested that the village board waive that requirement um, because of some economic hardship as well as the fact that they aren't established for surrounding Well, the property. economic hardship was, that was not, Paul talked to you about that, our, our landscaper. Mm -hmm. I mean, our- The general. Contractor. Yeah. And, um, I know that we, we paid him, or you or whatever, a check for, I think it was 2,500, half of, it we was, did half. It, it was half reduced. And I, we paid half. So um, I think like the 5, full 000. amount would have been 5,500 or somewhere along those lines. Roy? Okay, so. Yeah. If I may, yeah. that should not enter into this conversation whatsoever, though. We are here to uh, talk about a zoning code variance request for lot coverage, not for the sidewalk or the waiver of it. Okay. No further questions. Okay, I would compliment you when I was there today. Uh, it was raining quite heavily, and uh, there was no, what I saw, standing water whatsoever. Um, some of my fellow commissioners, you're under the impression that this architect is claiming that this planter is the 2% of the lot coverage. It is not. The planter is probably 0.5% of the lot coverage. 90% of this overage is the patio itself. It's quite substantial. Now, I would uh, commend you. It really is very pretty for a corner lot. <coughs> I really like what you did. I saw no trouble with the grass growing on the east side of the planter whatsoever. Uh, I could not imagine that you would not be able to have planted sod and got some grass growing right up to the, where you were. My real problem with you folks is when you were granted the variance for your front yard setback for your garage, you were fully aware that you were at the maximum lot coverage. This was made very clear because we were all sitting on the board. Knowing that you constructed this patio without seeking a permit, and to be quite honest with you, uh, that does not speak well as far as I'm concerned, and I intend to vote that way. That's all I have. Is there any further comment from any board members? <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Pill. On the uh, comments that we've been provided by um, Kim Nickel, um, it does have a breakdown of what that um, planter area is. So we've had this 35.9 versus 37.9. She points out that if you use the planter area as pervious in the middle, it's 36.8. So that figure 
with all the numbers, it's easy to slip one slip by. So that may be the actual figure then with the middle part being pervious and the holding walls being impervious. Okay, Commissioner, but yeah. my main problem with this is I don't care if it was a 0.1%. I feel that someone has knowingly exceeded the limits when they're very clear to them and they have not pulled the necessary permits and therefore that's the problem I have. I, I wasn't debating that. We just I was more addressing something that had okay. come up by various commissioners as to what that number really was and I forgot that it was actually laid out for right. us here. Is there any further uh, clarification? Okay, uh, since we have a request for a zoning code variance, we need findings of the fact if we may please. Criteria number one, the property in question cannot yield a reasonable return if permitted to be used only under the conditions allowed by the regulations in the district in which it's located. The addition to the single family house and related improvements made by the applicant were in conformity with the previously existing lot coverage requirement of 40%. It would be a hardship for the applicant to now remove some of those permanent improvements. Criteria number two, the plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances. The additional non-pervious improvements made by the applicant were made for functional and aesthetic purposes and were made without, made without the intention to violate the lot coverage requirement. Criteria number three, the variation if granted will not alter the essential character of the locality. The existing improvements in lot coverage is consistent with those of surrounding properties and the existing improvements will not adversely affect stormwater drainage. If you agree with this, please raise your question. hand. I have a question. Uh, no. Okay. In regards to this vote we're doing now. Um, what happens if I want to vote one way on one and the other way on two and, and we're having one vote? I was wondering when this was going to come up when we moved, when we changed the, the I, I format. I think that when we had changed it, um, John Zemanek had indicated that we could, if that was the commission's pleasure. And we take them separately. Yeah. We yes. could take them separately. I think I need, if you need that, to. this sure. case. Let's Want them taken separately, yes, okay. okay? As to criteria number one, how do you vote? Could, excuse me, could uh, you we're explain reading what a, the criteria one and two are for us, please? I'm sorry. Could, would you please explain? Shannon, would you please start over again, sure. please? Sure. We'll start with criteria read. one, uh, the reading yes, of the findings of fact. Yes, these are the findings of fact. Of fact. Um, so if they're adopted by the commission, these would be the measures of hardship, whether they were approved or not. Okay, so. Uh, do you, would you like me to read each one and then Please vote do. individually? We'll vote after each sure. one. So criteria number one is that the property in question cannot yield a reasonable return if permitted to be used only under the conditions allowed by the regulations in the district in which it's located. And the finding is that the addition to the single family house and related improvements made by the applicant were in conformity with the previously existing lot coverage requirement of 40%. It would be a hardship for the applicant to now remove some of those permanent improvements. If you agree with these findings, please raise your hand. Okay, Commissioner Fleet, Commissioner Fidesco, Commissioner Anton, Commissioner Pill are in accordance. They vote yes. I presume uh, all those opposed? Commissioner Thomas, Richard Van Buren, vote no. Criteria number two, the plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances. The additional non-pervious improvements made by the applicant were made for functional and aesthetic purposes and were made without the intention to violate the lot coverage requirement. Okay, for uh, all those in favor, uh, Commissioner Thomas, Commissioner Anton, Commissioner Fleet, all those opposed? Commissioner Pill, Richard, Van Buren, Fidesco. Criteria number three, the variation if granted will not alter the essential character of the locality. The existing improvements in lot coverage is consistent with those of surrounding properties and the existing improvements will not adversely affect stormwater drainage. If you're in agreement with this, please raise your hand. Commissioner Fleet, Fidesco, Anton, Pill, Thomas in the affirmative, the negative. Commissioner Van Buren and Richard. I would ask for some direction from Anne Marie. We are not unanimous. We're not unanimous at all. 
So are the findings of fact adopted or? They are adopted. We have more agrees than disagrees. Okay. I'm told by, con uh, by our attorney that the findings of fact are adopted. So far we have more in agreement than we have in disagreement. So I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the board of, uh, the board of trustees. Planning and zoning item 11-047. A zoning code variance request to permit lot coverage greater than the 30% maximum allowed in a defined development moratorium area. So moved. Second. That's motion by Commissioner Thomas, seconded by Commissioner Anton. Question on the motion. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Fidesco. Yes. Commissioner Fleet. Yes. Commissioner Van Buren votes no. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Pill. Yes. Commissioner Anton. Yes. And uh, Chairman Richard. No. Okay, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sodoma, you have uh, the board's uh, request for approval, and Shannon can tell you when you will go before the Committee of the Whole or the Board of Trustees. Thank you. It's a Thursday or a Monday night. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any uh, items to be brought up by the commissioners? Uh, Shannon, staff? Yes, I do. I have two items to bring up this evening. The first is that uh, we're still knee deep in our planning process for a comprehensive plan rewrite, and the consultant, Tausia Levine, will be presenting a community visioning workshop um, on January 19th. So I'll again mention it at our January meeting, but we want to make sure that members of the public feel welcome to attend that event. It's going to be a very hands-on and interesting opportunity to uh, state your vision for what the village of Westmont should look like in the next 10 to 20 year cycle. Um, that meeting again will take place on a Thursday. It's January 19th and it will be at the Park District facility at 55 East Richmond. It's the admin building in the Linden room where they hold their own board meetings. So that's 7 p.m. on January 19th. And uh, secondly, the um, Village Board heard a per, uh, the, the preliminary findings of the South Westmont Business District uh, TIF report from our consultant on that project, Tesca Associates, uh, at the last set of meetings. Uh, this is for the area generally bound by 63rd and Cass. And at that time, the consultant presented that we appear to meet uh, eight of 13 criteria that are enumerated by state statute where minimum of five criteria are required and the village board authorized the consultant to continue into phase two of the TIF project where um, we would move towards designating the joint review board, have additional public meetings um, and, and create a, a plan for the area. So just wanted to provide those updates to you folks. Okay, uh, I have an item that I had spoken to previously today with Shannon concerning a tobacco, alcohol and tobacco smoke shop opening up on the south end of Cass Avenue. Uh, upon somebody asked me to look into this and looking just through the doorway, it, uh, they have a large amount of smoking type paraphernalia, hookahs, uh, it's hard to see some of the stuff that is in the showcase. And I was a bit dismayed to see that they just arbitrarily were able to get a business license. Uh, I, I would like to perhaps get the board's feeling. And we control, the village does, I'm not talking this board, but the village controls their liquor licenses by ordinance. How would the board feel about making a motion to the Board of Trustees that perhaps this might be a business that it wouldn't be a bad idea for the village board to establish an ordinance and set a number, a quantity, as to these type of businesses? Because to be quite frankly with it, uh, these devices can be used for an illegal purpose. 
and I, I'm really not quite sure that I want to be the uh, the hometown where anybody and everybody could go in. I'll finish in a second, Craig. Okay. <laughs> that anybody and everybody can come in. This is not a what I would consider a desirable element. Uh, Shannon, do we have any ordinances controlling uh, illegal drugs? Uh, there are synthetic marijuana is coming on the market now. One of the common names is spice that I'm familiar with. We have some ordinances pertaining to um, drug paraphernalia, and I suppose that that may generally be quantified within that, but devices and things like that. Um, but that would be a device, not a substance. These are it substances. may fall within that broad part of the ordinance. Our, actually, our police department is looking into this matter specifically. So, um, and I, I did brief our attorney on it as well. I'm not sure if Anne Marie may have some additional feedback. There are um, a lot, a number of towns that are actually um, adapting ordinances regarding these um, synthetic substances because they don't fall under the Cannabis Control Act because it's not true cannabis, mm -hmm. um, and they don't fall under um, other types of things, we, um, in prosecuting them at some point, try to find a way to prosecute them under the paraphernalia statute or other like statutes. Um, but uh, it's probably uh, the recommendation to adapt uh, a synthetic drug ordinance. Is there, um, is there any, uh, in your experience, uh, anything that can control the sale of paraphernalia, which definitely has a use that would be illegal? Yes. But it's not within itself an illegal item? Yes. Or uh, it could be illegal? Right. We do have a, an ordinance. Um, it's illegal to actually have the paraphernalia um, to sell these, or to, to possess these things. Um, and those statutes carry a pretty stiff penalty. It's a $750 minimum fine on those. Now, depending on what you find with those things, you know, a traffic stop, they find rolling papers and they find cannabis. Okay, well, you're talking about the person possessing it. I'm right. talking about the person the selling it. store, we do have um, some ordinances on that. Um, we don't prosecute them as, as often, I should say, um, because we do have tobacco licenses. There's the tobacco commissioner. We do um, spot checks on sales of tobacco to minor, to minors. And when the officers go in to do those spot check sales, um, they do notice what el whatever else is there and write up those violations. However, um, the way that the officers get in there is through grants and based upon the state of Illinois and the lack of funds for grants and things like that. Um, it's it hasn't been as frequent as it probably should be. Um, I, you know, I think, as you pointed out, I think based upon the economy, um, people are trying to sell what they can, however they can these days, and they're probably going towards more of those types of substances, so we should probably consider beefing up the ordinances that we have on our books um, so that we can attempt to control this situation. I think it's very timely because, to my knowledge, this is the first one of these I know in, this, in, this, in our town. Commissioner Thomas, you had some. Okay, you, you, you initially asked what this board thought of an ordinance or a, um, a suggestion to the trustees, and, that, and I am very uncomfortable with us doing that a suggestion to them on someone coming to you and, and saying, please look into this, and we have a police department, we have people that do this and you yourself stated that you were on the outside looking in so without even entering into the place to see what's in there and an, an observation from the sidewalk I, I don't I'm not comfortable at all about doing that if, if the police department can go in there and, and look and see if everything's fine it's fine if it's not they'll, they, they, they'll produce they'll do their due <coughs> diligence and they will do their job and I don't think it's up to us to um, Craig, the parking lot that. the parking lot goes to the front door and I was standing with my nose pressed to the glass okay looking in. you still were not Very inside good. the establishment we are we I are not have, the police department I, please 
Right. Mr. Commissioner, um, Mr. Chairman, I should say. Uh, one thing I didn't quite understand is I, I didn't think that you could have a facility that offers smoking and have a village um, uh, liquor license. Um, I, I thought that that's under the current um, state laws. Um, I didn't think you could have that. So, um, I mean, like we do have like a, a cigar um, uh, store in our town, and I think people bring in their own glass of wine or a beer or something like that. But I know that they can't sell liquor. I believe that you have to have a fairly high percentage of your sales from tobacco and tobacco-related accessories um, to uh, allow you to have the smoking on the premises. And I think that number is like 80% or something like that. Um, so I'm just curious, is, is, is it, I'm not familiar with this business, but they actually have a liquor license from our village? No. no. Oh, I thought that's what you said. No. That wasn't brought up whatsoever. Well, you said I alcohol think you did. and alcohol. Alcohol. the alcohol. Now that I oh, much as we control our alcohol licenses. Oh, I thought you were implying they had an no, alcohol. No, 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 not okay. whatsoever. Okay, okay. I'm I don't sorry. even think. I apologize for that. I don't even think that on this premises it's a smoke shop for such okay. as a, the cigar place here. It's perhaps I like the one right place. here in town we I think have. This is more of a place of just buying. This will only be for Retail. appliances. A, Retail. Okay. Well, also oh. I'm sure they sell the appliances and the and the um, and the tobacco. And whatever. per the state law that went into effect January first, two thousand nine, um, if you're to have smoking inside of a building, it has to be freestanding. So uh, this, when that business license came through that was a level of scrutiny that they were put through um, that they were not to allow smoking indoors so that it would be compliant because it's an attached commercial building so they're only allowed to sell at retail like right nobody, it's, it's not a smoke shop it's it's a okay. it's a re it, well the way that it was billed was as a retail um, smoke tobacco accessory okay. shop and is it in the is it in the b3 it's B2 general business. B2. Actually, I'm sorry, that's I think C1 commercial business. Well, I don't think we should have that's that. That's not job. the B1 down there, it's the B2 district. It's, it's, um, it was B2, and I believe now it's C1 commercial business. That, that corridor is C1. That's, that's the TIF area. Right. It's the TIF area, Ed. Okay. <laughs> so that was the one that was, we changed that. Yes, some, some time ago. Anne Marie, would there be any legal problem with us perhaps coming up with a, um, a motion to the Board of Trustees that perhaps this might be something that would bear looking into? No, I don't see a problem with it because okay. what you're doing is you're talking about numbering the, the licenses available for Correct. Um, much tobacco. as Much as liquor licenses are right. regulated by number. Right, exactly. Okay. I think that's what we did recently with massage ther therapy establishments, too. Would anybody, okay, any further comment or anything? Well, it's either going to fly or fall. I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees that they consider limiting the license for smoke shops. I'll second that. Limiting the number of licenses limiting available. Limiting the number of licenses available, much as they parcel out alcohol licenses. And um, like the alcohol license, the village board would have the um, opportunity to increase or decrease that okay. number. Absolutely, the authority is completely okay. in their hands. That was my question. I was going to ask that question if, they, if the board can change. So that, that's fine. And depending on somebody who wanted to come in. Right, to the they could come in and, and request and the village board could make that decision. This is okay. only a recommendation that the trustees consider this, that's all. They may say, Richard, you're all wet, go away. I think it's a good idea, personally. I don't want to become the smoke center of Illinois. And there shouldn't be head shops, period. I mean, that just, that's just the way I feel about it. I don't know how everybody else feels, but well, go, this go is, somewhere else, go somewhere else. This is here. my home, I don't want those kind of people yeah. in my house. I paid taxes here, big taxes. Yep. Okay, so we got a motion and a second. We have a motion by Richard, seconded by Van Buren. Question on the motion. 
May we have roll call, please? Commissioner Fleet? No. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Thomas? No. Commissioner Pell? No. Commissioner Anton? Yes. Commissioner Fidesco? Yes. And Chairman Richard? Yes. I would like to thank all the far-sighted commissioners that. I'm not the other You're God. welcome. I'm going to get in trouble on that. <laughs> no, okay. Um, anything further to discuss? Before we uh, say good night, I would like to wish everybody in the audience, both here and at home, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Anton, seconded by Commissioner Thomas. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>